Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the M5 Stack Atomic GPS kit. It's a small GPS module with an inbuilt SD card slot. We're going to be looking at how we can read the data coming from the GPS module, a little bit about the NMEA standard and how we can use it to track ourselves and show the data on Google Maps. So let's get started. Our first port of call is the docs pages. So let's go ahead and have a look at the Atomic GPS kit features. So we can see here that it's compatible with all the major satellite systems, GLONASS, Galileo, etc. And the output is NMEA version 0183. And the chip being used in this module is the M8030KT, which is a U-Blox chip actually. So later on we'll have a look at checking this out in U-Blox's U-Center application. But first let's go ahead and download the Easy Loader. You'll see now that we have both Windows and Mac OS versions of the Easy Loader. So let's go ahead and connect our M5 Atom or M5 Atom Lite device up to the computer. Make sure to select the correct board rate and then hit burn. And in just a moment we'll have a successfully flashed device. You can find the Arduino sketch for the program we just flashed with the Easy Loader down below. What this program does is to send the data from the GPS to the serial monitor and also log it in a text file on the SD card if you've inserted one and it even sends the serial data over Bluetooth. So let's first open our serial terminal and check what's going on. Once we select the correct COM and board rate we can start to see the latitude and longitude values, although they're kind of skewed across the screen. And you'll see that both latitude and longitude are just at zero now. We need to make sure that the little red light on the module is flashing in sync with the blue light. This means that it's got a fix on the satellite. Then we'll start to get some proper longitude and latitude values. This serial output is a little bit difficult for me to read or copy and paste from. So now we must have generated a reasonable amount of data. I'm going to go ahead and remove the SD and check what data we have on there. So here in the SD card we can see this gpsdata.txt file. And if we go ahead and open that up, we can see the values latitude, longitude and UTC time. You'll see here all the zero values at the start before the module got a fix on a satellite. Here we start to see the real values. Now as a test, I'm going to copy and paste these values into Google Maps and see if the location was accurate or not. And this has placed me in the sea just off the coast of Shizuoka, Japan. I'm not in Japan right now, although I would like to be. So what went wrong here? We'll see in a moment that the NMEA sentences give a lot more detail and this Arduino sketch chopped out a lot of that. And what was missing was that I'm actually in the southern hemisphere. So therefore I need to add a minus in front of my latitude coordinate. And that's more like it. I am in fact in sunny Adelaide, South Australia. But it is still quite a ways off my actual location. And this module is supposed to be accurate up to 2 to 3 meters. The Beitian BN200 module in this device is pretty accurate, hence why it's quite popular among drone flyers. The chip itself is pre-programmed to output NMEA sentences over serial. Let's have a look at this data in a different way using the Ublox UCenter application. So we'll go ahead to the Ublox website and download that. I wasn't able to get any output or fix on the location while it was plugged into the Atom device. So I disconnected it and connected it up to a M5 stack USB to TTL serial converter. 
Now you can see that once I've chosen the correct serial port, I get an instant fix in the software and I can see a lot of data now. If I open the packet monitor, I can see here all of the NMEA sentences. And below, if I open the text console, now I can start to see the latitude and longitude. I can even see the sky view of which satellites I'm connected to, and so on. If you've worked with GPS before, you're probably aware of what these NMEA sentences are that I've been talking about. If not, let's have a quick look at a guide to reading these. NMEA is an acronym for the National Marine Electronics Association, and it develops standards for connecting GPS receivers, gyro compasses, and other marine equipment. Here we can see that each NMEA sentence is preceded by a dollar sign, and then it will have a two-letter prefix. GP means that the following location information has been attained by more than one satellite. GL means the data was attained from a GLONASS satellite. GN means that the location data could have been attained from a combination of GPS and GLONASS and other satellites. Following this prefix, we have a series of three-letter acronyms which stand for various things such as VTG, which stands for Vector Track or Overground Speed, GGA, which stands for Fixed Information, GSV, which stands for Detailed Satellite Data, and GLL, which stands for Latitude Longitude Data, which we're most interested in. Now let's take a closer look at a breakdown of one of the sentences. First we have the UTC time, followed by the Latitude. The latitude is succeeded by an S or an N to tell us whether the coordinate is the northern or the southern hemisphere. Then we have the longitude. Likewise, the longitude will have a W or E to tell us if it's in the eastern or western hemisphere. Then there are a number of other factors which we may have depending on the message. There is likely to be an A in the sentence which means acknowledged. And finally, there may be an asterisk followed by a hexadecimal number, which is a checksum to see if there are any errors. This is fun to dissect for a while, but I'm sure you want to see these coordinates on a map. So how can we do that? In a moment, we'll use a website to map our coordinates to a map. But first, we'll need this NMEA data in a text file. Since the Arduino sketch we just used does not include the NMEA data, I decided to use this serial logging sketch that I made in the last video for connecting to the Cisco switch. Since the board rate on this device is 9600, the same as the Cisco switch, I didn't need to change anything. Now I use a simple command to log the data from my screen session to a text file. Now that I see that the data is being written to the serial, I decided to go for a little bit of a walk with my M5 Atom plugged into my laptop, looking totally inconspicuous. After a 30 minute walk, I have this GPS text, which is still only 750 kilobytes in size. Now all I need to do is strip it of any unnecessary information. Then I'll go to gpsvisualizer.com. We can see here the data formats supported by the website, which includes Ublox data, and also NMEA0183. So we'll go ahead and upload that text file. And then choose from the drop down list Google Maps. And in just a moment, I can see this line showing where I've been on my walk. If you want to open up this data in Google Maps, it's also possible. Choose the Google Earth option below Make a Map, then re upload your text file and then click the button that says create KML file. Now, once we've downloaded this KML or KMZ file, we can go into Google Maps, then go to your places. Now we are able to create a map and it allows us to import that file that we just exported from the other website. And here we are. I can see my trajectory of the walk in Google Maps. And there we have it. 
that's about all we have time for for this week. I hope to make more videos in the future on the GPS kit. If you have any ideas, make sure to leave them down in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.